test, 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 testing. So I've been doing a lot of feedback streams and one of the main things that I'm always telling people to do is improve call and response. Now I wanna make a couple of videos on this. I think it's really important that we go over flow techniques, phrasing, song arrangement, composition. These things are important so that we can keep the energy progressing over time in our drop and most importantly, get people to stay interested all the way till the end and keep the energy high. So I'm gonna show you some examples of my songs that have good call and response, some songs that do not. I have an old song from four years ago when I used to have a different name that I'm gonna show you. And then we'll go over some songs from like Of The Trees, Alien Park, Marada, YVM3, Gorilla T. And we're gonna check out their call and response. Then what I wanna do is show you how to make a call and response structure from scratch. Basically a four bar phrase that contains a call, response, and fill. And those are the main elements that we'll be using movement throughout the track. A lot of the times when we're making dubstep, we're playing the root note the whole time, and there's not a lot of movement between pitches, or there maybe there's not a lot of automation going on that's adding movement. So we wanna make sure that we're not playing the same sound repeatedly over time, because that'll start to get repetitive. And then us humans, we can predict what's gonna happen if we know what's gonna happen next, and we're not gonna get surprised. So there's gonna be less energy in the track if things start to get repetitive. So I'm gonna show you some techniques to easily get out of that. We'll do from scratch and serum. We'll make some bases together and I'll show you what's up with the fills too. First, I'm gonna show you an example of a song that doesn't do it correct. I hear it. it's pretty decent dubstep basses cool right but energy is not as high as it can be i added a fake out to try to increase the energy levels, but without a call and response, the energy levels stay pretty low. So fake out without the drums. And then the bass starts right here. It then restarts right here. These main phrases are going to be about four bars in length. And that's when everything starts to repeat. So these four bar phrases are our main thing. And within the four bar phrase, it's playing the same bass the whole time. So when we get to the next four bar phrase, it starts to get repetitive and there's not enough movement. Within the four bar phrase, we're going to be splitting it up into call response fill and we'll use the snare and the clap to guide us. Let's look at an example that I did here on a song that I may call Galactic, where I do it proper and it sounds like it has a better flow. It feels like it has more energy. Those are the things we're looking for. Outer space. So lots of movement here compared to the other track. Now that I learned call and response, I'm able to make flow here. So let's go ahead and try to break this down into call response fill so that you guys can see what's up here. Let me get this perfect on grid so it'll look even better. Call response fill will be within four bars, but it doesn't always have to be. And there's gonna be different types of call and response techniques that we'll be going over to some advanced. It's not always a four bar phrase, and you don't always have to do the call and response with the bass. Sometimes it could be with the synth behind. And uh, we'll check into that towards the end. This is our four bar phrase. And when you're making your song, you're going to have something very similar. This point threes is where the snare, the clap hits. 
So we're gonna make a cut there and call this the call. Towards the end on the last point three, you can actually have a response. And towards the end on the last point three, you can have a fill. We're gonna double check the timing on this here. So we're gonna show the whole eight bars so you guys can see the call and response I did here. Then we'll split the eight in half to here. So now that we have two four bars, you can see the different call and response. <laughs> This side will have the OG call response fill, which is what I recommend you start practicing first. Within your four bars, you'll have your call, which is a bass and maybe something in between. We got a horn, glass break, vocal. And then we get the snare, and as soon as that snare or that clap hits, then we start riding out that bass. All the, way, all the way to the last point three, the last snare that hits, and then this is the fill section, which is going to be different than the bass. So the whole point is for us to have our main star of the show and different guys. We're moving from call to this response, back to this fill, and then when it restarts, then that response will still sound new and fresh moving forward. So we can go ahead and listen to what it sounds like in the next phrase here. So the next call, and then we're back into the response. And like I said earlier, this is a different type of call and response. So I kind of go back and forth between the original method, which is this, and then doing one with no fill. So this is one with no fill. <laughs> Depending on your song, you're gonna wanna have different flows and different movements. So sometimes you can just have this call and response flow like this, and you can duplicate it. Then this will be your eight bars right here. Then you duplicate it again, and then this is your full drop, which is 16 bars right here. That's a real easy way to start practicing making drops. Remember, you're always using the, the snare and the clap as your guide. That's the rhythm, that's the main rhythm. We're gonna be dancing and headbanging to that, so it's important. Now, if you look back at my bad example, there's no call response fill. <laughs> You hear I'm like adding chants, adding like sustains, adding all kinds of different fast movements, but it's just not enough. It's just not enough energy, you know, we need full energy. So that's kind of why we're heading on this direction. So then now we want to go ahead and look at one example from a pro, and then we'll get into making our own. So Alien Park is really good at this. Let's go and check out his. So insane call response fill. Let's go ahead and double check. We get this lined up on grid. We're gonna check that snare. Make sure it lines up on the point three. Cool. So this is our four bar phrase. And usually you'll see the four bar and the eight bar phrase is really what we're looking at. Is as long as you get a nice four bar loop, that's the goal. So let's check out Alien Park's call response fill. So it's call right into the snare. So the call is just big sub and one bass shot. And then we're into the main motif. 
He does a sick pro like flutter movement right here and then back into the response. So he's really leveling up the call and response here. Remember, it's all going to the snare too. So as soon as we hear this clap. And then the last point three, like I mentioned in the four bar, is going to be for the fill. So this is his fill section. And his four bars is like this, so we'll loop this and you'll see it's a nice loop. Beautiful. And then let's check out his next four bar. Now you see this fill starts at not the point three this time, but the bar or the downbeat right before it. So it starts on the full bar here. So a lot of these fills sometimes that the pros will do will be full bar fills rather than the half bar fill, which starts at the clap. Keep that in mind. This will happen a lot to a different type of call and response. So label it here, call, response, fill, and the four bar. So that's real sick to see. We're going to look at the other ones here, but let's go ahead and make our own, you know, get started with our own four bar. So I'm going to solo right here. And first, I'm going to make a main bass, like my main motif. We'll just do some quick FM synthesis, you know. We're just trying to do something fast, easy. Add a little bit of movement with some high notch. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of that lfo -age. You know, put it down a little bit. Put this up a little bit. Turn up the little resi. We want these uh, filter notches to touch. That's really the goal. We'll use this wavetable position. We're going to use FM from B. And we're going to uh, add this LFO to the level. We'll do a little bit of trigger. And maybe we'll do like a triplet rate because that's just gangster. We'll go a little bit of triplets. So we'll listen to what this sounds like. I'm an octave zero. That's what I'm going to play now. Now we can't hear anything because F from B is down. So we're going to turn this up and you're going to hear what this does. So I kind of like guide the frequency, maybe I want a little bit lower. Let's start using this. Now that's adding movement, and that's what we need. I'm going to turn up the sound with multiband compression. Gonna compress all those frequencies, gonna add some distortion. Let's go ahead and look for like a nice filter, maybe like a comb, all pass. So there's a lot of lows. Coming from the sine wave. Cool, now we'll look around. I'm gonna add more movement to the wavetable. I really just start to find like a sound that feels good. I'm also gonna add a quick loud rack so we can Quickly add OTT, compression, saturation. Start getting this loud right away. I'm going to dial back some of these OT tizzles to make sure that they're not going too hard in the paint. And then we'll keep it moving. Nicely done. So before, after. We're going to get an EQ8 on this because we're going to be adding a sub right here. And then pushing them both together. And go ahead and put 
put some of this MIDI information right here. Start just, you know, start writing this out. And you'll see usually when we're making music, this is usually how we start it going, right? We have our four bars, maybe it's two bars. Sometimes we accidentally loop a two bar phrase, which it's super repetitive over time. So we got to be careful. Four bars is a nice starting point. Okay, so we're going to listen to this and we'll add like a sub. sub and a bass. And then we can go ahead and look at the bass, continue to we can put it on half, make two different shapes. Right now we're at 99, so we need to speed this up ASAP. Oh, maybe we can maybe we can even make two shapes right here. So I'm gonna try that. Let's say I want that cool shape and then I just want the OG quarter note. I'm gonna duplicate it and start thinking ahead. I'll have two bases ready to go. Put it on back on quarter. We're gonna delete these. We're gonna move this. This will be our OG quarter. We'll listen to that with the sub here. And then let's say maybe I want like a wide version of this quarter. So we're gonna make this quarter wide. And we wanna make a layer to support the original. So we'll Turn up these voices, mess with the detune, maybe add a little bit of hyper, add even more voices, and start to really get a wide sound. Now, this will not be focused on low frequency, so we're going to remove a lot of those. Kind of turn these frequencies down so we could start to. I want to play these both together. Play with the sub. Now let's say that I want to now make a fast loop. We can go ahead and just like add a kick in here. Then we can find like a clap. We'll layer probably two claps. We've got a long clap and a short clap. I'm gonna solo these, put this kick in like a rhythm formation. Move these here. Double check this clap. can EQ it. Alright, so I'm going to try this one. Find like a ride. I always want a nice, some nice hats so we can keep it moving. Quarter note. I'll put these in quarter note, fade them a little bit, keep moving. Now, we're making a drum loop. By the way, this whole project will be in the Patreon if you guys want this finished product. And we're going to then listen to this four bar loop.
Now that's cool. Now we're going to add movement. So like we were talking about earlier at the point threes. So we're going to get it done. So we're going to move the main sounds to the point three. And we're also going to cut them off at the last point three over here. So at the beginning, not the main sound, we're going to put something else. And that's why we made this space earlier. This cool one. And we want to kind of make this one a little bit different. So we'll like move the wavetable position, for example. Maybe we'll go like higher frequency. And then this higher frequency will lead into these lower frequencies. Then we kind of go back and forth with tone that way while we're going back and forth with rhythm. So this is going like faster. And then it leads into the regular speed. So it's important we do different speeds and do different types of basses here. This could even be sustained if I wanted it to be. So if I made a sustained version, for example, it'd be really easy. Duplicate it, change the LFO. You just put it in an envelope. You can delete all these little dots. Don't really need them anymore. And then you can just pull up this dot all the way top right. You can even add a little pitch with signal window and automate the pitch to go up like this. Make a little sustains, and then we'll try both of these options. But first, we'll do this one. And then we also kind of want to make we want to make a sub for it too. So we're gonna duplicate it, call it base call sub, and you can easily just turn off all the effects, all the oscillators, and then add this LFO to the sub. Then turn off like any EQ8s that can mess it up. Add a saturation, maybe to add some extra harmonics that are clean on top of the sine wave. Use the EQ8 to kind of clean it up, low pass. And then we got to make sure that the sub oscillator is turned on. And I'll add like more even more saturation, so like a tube warmth. Something like that. And this will flow with this. With the G clip that's on the group of these, we can even turn this up. Start to squish them together. And always put a nice JST clip. Make sure that JST clip is on the end of your chain so nothing's clipping. Make it sound nice and clean. So now we can lead in from this fast bass. Cool. So you hear at the beginning I did the ride long. If we just left it like this, it works, but this adds more bounce with it going slow than fast. So we're doing almost call and response with our hats too to match what the bass is doing. So this is going to be really loud because of the G clip. So we're going to turn down the basses and start to compensate. Make sure we have the JST clips. We're just mixing as we go, basically. Getting, we're still really loud here, so we're going to start dialing it back until we hit like around negative three. Which should really be like the limit. Easily we can get too loud, so we got to constantly check, make sure that we're doing good. That's important. So now we're having some type of flow here. And then we're going to add like 
let's say, Dritman Vox to end this phrase. And this will be like, basically, a fill. But we can use many things. So I'll show you examples. Like, what I like to do too is use Reese fills. So if you type in Reese fill, for example, you throw one of these in. This is on E, it says. So I can just easily tune it. Go down a D sharp, down a D, and then make sure it's warped correctly. Cool. Now that's slowed down because of the original BPM, so we'll find something else that works. Maybe like that. Tune it to D, make sure that it flows with what happens previously. So that's a Reese fill. You can use many different types of bass fills, all kinds of creative stuff. This is where you can get creative. But I like to do Vox. You know, this is fun. Biscotti. You know. That's a bowl of shit. You can just grab any of these, right? Like unlock power. Right? Start throwing them in. I hold command right here. Unlock. Unlock. Maybe I'll try to find something Prestige. longer. Prestige. Prestige. And a lot of the times, too, the call, I'll cut it in half and kind of create an extra section. So you could put, like, right, coins, you know, just random cool sound effects inside of these little silence sections and add even more movement. And this is really helpful. This is the point two right before the point three up here. Right, or you can use a vocal, like a chant. Like something like this. Just start throwing things in. Add cool effects on it, right, to kind of fill up the rest of the space. Or maybe go like crazy fast with it. Start pitching it down, you know, start playing around. <laughs> Quickly, you're making a flow, and let's say we find a flow that we like. <laughs> then we simply grab it all, and we're gonna just duplicate our four bar phrase. And then we have our eight bars. Just like this. And then you can start slightly modifying the next four bars so that we have a nice eight bar loop. Let's check it. Prestige. So we're going to take out this. We don't need it. Maybe we'll use the sustain base now. So this one will come into play. We'll turn this on. We can turn this off, turn this off. It does need a sustained sub, so we'll go ahead and make a sustained sub for this. So this sub that we made earlier, we'll just reuse it. Call this sus sub, and then serum we can change the LFO simply. Right, delete these dots, put it on envelope, we can sustain it easily like that. And then boom, we have a sustained sub to go with the sustained bass that will turn down. Okay, now we're gonna listen to this and then we'll also, we need to change this vocal. We can't have the same vocal. So I'll bring in another vocal, something that I- That's a, that's a bowl of That's a bowl, you know? That's fine. If I see these silences, I'm going to fix it, grab command, move it, like that. Maybe I'll hold shift and time stretch it, and really get the timing right. I can even line it up to these lines here, All right? So we can move this first off, and cut a little bit, 
a little time stretch. Maybe leave a little bit of silence. Prestige. So when the fill comes, I don't want the hi-hats to play. So I'm going to cut the hi-hats during the fills. Kind of clean it up and we'll go ahead and listen to this eight bars now that we have the new sussy and the new vocal. Let's go. <laughs> And then preferably you would kind of like maybe want to change the second section too. So let's say we duplicate both of the main ones. Let's call it 14T and 14Wide T. I can even recolor these to make it easier to see. And we'll make a special version that only happens in the second half right here. So now we go back and forth between quarter to now quarter triplet. We're just going to serum, change it to the T. You know what it is. We can go back to this one, change it to the T. And sometimes you will be modifying the LFO shape so that it feels and flows even better with your new LFO rate. Uh, but right now we're just leaving it as is. We'll go ahead and listen to this. And let's say maybe we want it to go back and forth between the original speed and our new speed, you can easily do that too if you wanted to. So I can just copy and paste like this. It becomes real easy. Prestige. And once you have eight bars, boom, you just duplicate it again. And then you do the same technique, start changing the calls, changing the responses, changing the fills ever so slightly. You can start automating, changing pitch. And this is the simplest way to do call and response. We're going to now look into what the pros do, some more advanced methods that they do with call and response, where some background elements are involved, the synths are involved. I'm going to check it out first. We'll listen to a super simple example of the trees, some psychedelic wubs. Yeah. Very clean. So like we we're talking about earlier, the call that leads into the first snare. Snares layered with a nice clean like triangle. Then we get thrown into the response right here, super clean. So you'll see he's not really doing a full fill at the snare. But he's doing a nice silence dynamic shift towards the end of his four bar phrase, which is really cool. So all kinds of cool different call and response techniques being used. So that is going to now lead us into some heavier Murata stuff. Get ready. go back. All right, so this is a more advanced, this is an eight bar call and response where our first four bars is like no call response fill. It's just this main sound. We're focused on the sound design. We do do a fill right at the last snare. 
which leads us into the next phrase. Let's go ahead and check this out here. Actually, no, this is the four bars. So this isn't a fill. This is the call for the next phrase. This first four bars, just the bass playing. No call, no fill. Next four bars, we go back to the original call, response, fill technique. So let's listen to this phrase. So as soon as the snare hits, you hear it glitch out, which is our fill. And as soon as this call starts, we have sick bass as soon as that snare hits. Murata is a Don, so he's extending the call and response, doing some cool, different techniques. And then essentially he starts repeating it over again, one more time, and then the drop's done. Pretty simple when you look at it like that, right? Let's look at some YVM3. Cool, so let's get into the main beef here. So since the sound design is really the main focus in this tear out track, the call and response is happening with the rhythmic movement of these guns. So let's listen to how they're moving. So this is a more advanced phrase indeed, and we have this sick, sick fill here at the end, and we have it going from slow to fast. Now we have these fills that are really helping. So as soon as that snare hits, big washout huge drum fill and then back into the beef different type of call and response right no call really but huge fills and a lot of the movement is coming with how this the rate of the guns are going since the sound design and the sub is so powerful and dominant and the main focus they're able to do different types of sound design and you can see that the call is withheld and it's still working and of course each phrase is slightly changing to progress the energy over time then lastly let's get into some gorilla t very very awesome call and response here imagine for a minute yes sir Absolutely beautiful. So this call right here, the wiggly wobbly. Then you hear the snare and we get into it. And it's, it's a slight delay here, gangster delay. Before we actually get into the beef. Not really a fill, but then we go back into the call. can see that he's kind of going back and forth now so halfway through the drop we're speeding up the rate changing the pitch yeah and that's how we're creating movement different call and response flows with different artists it's up to you to make your own flows make your own style the goal is to just keep the energy moving if you're not using a melodic synth where it's changing in pitch, 
things can get repetitive, things can get predictable over time easily. So you want to make sure you keep the energy high and keep your people dancing. You know what it is. You know what it is. I do 1v1 lessons all the time. Hit me up if you need help. Instagram, Discord. You know where you can reach me. Otherwise, thank you guys for the support. You guys are amazing. Keep on producing and expanding, evolving. Peace out, guys. I lick it more, but the moon.